know that uh, when we see about the, I mean, the item format about multiple choice questions, now most of us, I think we, we apply this item format uh, in through online, right? So uh, what I'm going to share with you is not related to whether you are going, we are going to apply uh, through uh, online or offline. So the, our main focus is, uh, I mean, the quality of the item. Actually, the quality of the item is more important, right? Because online or offline is up to us, right? Uh, whether we want to do apply it, I mean, the student have to search it in uh, through the our e-learn, or we will use paper and pencil test format. Format that is more to the technical, okay? Uh, so um, to how to say uh, to avoid you all confused. I mean, uh, another one of the title from our CBA also is about uh developing uh, MCQ test, right? But then that, that one is uh, the, the knowledge that you can learn is more to the applications uh, through online, okay? Uh, so these are the things that I think I have to make sure that you all clear about this. Okay, so uh, okay, so before I start, I think I forgot. Uh, sorry, uh, okay, thank you for uh, CDAE, okay, to, uh, to invite me to, to conduct this workshop. Okay, so uh, two hours. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions that you can, anytime you can interrupt, okay, make it an informal. And then uh, if let's say um, you want to put in chat box, also can, also, uh, we, uh, I, anytime I will chat, uh, I will chat the, the chat box. Okay, I try to answer your questions. Okay, so, uh, okay, so now we are going to start. Okay, so before we discuss, okay, again, uh, the title. Okay, make sure we are on the, I mean, we are really focused on this title. Okay, we really want to learn about come out, how to develop, okay, how to construct uh, a better quality of MCQ. So as a assessor, now today, we have to be very clear that our role is not longer as a lecturer, okay, to deliver the content of our course, but we must make sure that we try to, how to say, when it come to the assessment process, we must try to learn this. I mean, some important skill and uh, what is it? The knowledge, okay, to become a professional assessor. Okay, it actually is very important. Actually, in our teaching and learning, there are three three component which encircle right uh, learning outcome as a main reference, and then we did we have a teaching and learning process, and then we assess it. So uh, these three so these three component they are they, they are related each other. Okay, so if we ignore one of the component, actually the whole we can say that we influence. Okay, the, it, the, it influence the quality of our course. Okay, so what I can what, I, what we can highlight is we must be we must be very serious when come to the asset assessment. So in our Okay, I uh I'm my I'm Lim. Uh, you can just call me Lim. I'm in this uh in uh, I'm from School of Education Study. Okay, my area is about educational assessment and evaluation. So we influence our assessment. So what we, when we discuss about the the what is it the quality of assessment? There are two main concerns actually in education assessment. There are reliability and validity. Okay, so later when I, when we discuss about the the topic, okay. So I will, I will how to say, okay. I will. Yes, it's on the, uh, the uh, still we are on first page, huh? Okay. So I will this. I will touch about the concept of reliability and validity to ensure that all of us understand about. I mean, two two main concern. How the how is the important to our assessment process? Okay. Once valid, once reliable. Uh, means with that only we can discuss the degree about the quality of our assessment. Okay, so this thing I think uh, we, we as an assessor to become a professional assessor, we must be very clear about this. Okay, okay, so of course the main focus of this topic is about, I think I'm sure we know that we want to learn what are some guidelines to develop the better quality of multiple choice questions. So before we go to uh, how to say we go to share about the the, the, the guidelines about how to come out the uh, good quality MCQ of MCQ, I will say I will mention MCQ means multiple choice question. Okay, so it will be easier. Normally we will we will uh, how to say we will just mention MCQ. Huh? So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope 
uh, later you understand when I say MCQ. Huh? Okay, so before we learn the guidelines, okay, learn the guideline. I found that it's very important to ladies and gentlemen to have to have some I uh how to say the picture, okay, about about the family, okay. What family actually come from for multiple choice questions? And also, what are the concepts of multiple choice question? At least we have to know the, the, the background, right? Uh, and then the, the, the basic, uh, what is it? Uh, the, the intro the intro of the this uh, multiple choice question, why we categorize it as a paper, as a paper and pencil test, what does it mean, right? Uh, so and then only we have a clearer pictures about this uh, multiple choice questions. And I'm, I'm, I expect that it's not only multiple search questions, but I will discuss. I hope that um, after my sharing, uh, ladies and gentlemen have a better, broader pictures about MCQ and the, uh, the family members of MCQ as well. Uh, that will be better for us to understand and to appropriately use it and fully utilize it. Okay. Uh, so. So that is the things I think I will, I'm going, we are going to cover. And then, of course, we need to know the pro and cons. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no one item format which is perfect and can fix all. You know, uh, so some some will say that I say it's good. Now, today, a lot of people critic about MCQ. But still, MCQ, still people use it. So, like, like we say just now, there is no perfect, okay? They have a pro and cons. So how are we going to decide it? Later we are going to discuss. Okay. So this is what I'm going to. Uh, I mean, as an intro, uh, about the how to say about some uh knowledge. Okay. Uh, regarding the family, the concept and pro and con of MCQ. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, like I say just now, I meant I did mention just now about paper and pencil test, right? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, in education assessment, actually is very simple. The category of paper and pencil test. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, again, when I say paper and pencil test, don't have the misunderstanding uh, that uh, means only can be implemented, can be administered in, uh, what is it, uh, in offline. Okay, so uh, again, Either online or offline, that is come from, I mean, depends on the asset assessor. Okay, so paper and pencil test in our education assessment, very simple, only two categories. Okay, so the first category, we call it as a constructed response test item. So uh, all the old terminology we use is subjective test. Okay, so what does mean subjective test, ladies and gentlemen? Although it's not related, but you have to make sure that we have to make sure that we understand the family of MCQs is under paper and pencil. And all the family members we need to know at least. Okay. And then only we go to the I will bring uh, I will bring you to go in detail about MCQ. Okay. So constructed response test item. Okay. So two kinds basically. Okay, basically, yeah. I say basically, okay, there are two. That is short answer and a say item. Okay, I have, uh, I think I have conducted the workshop about how to develop the uh, good essay item and also the scoring rubric uh, in May, uh, already over. Okay, so that is, uh, that is uh, a, how to say, the very common item format we apply in our course, right? Essay item. So, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, because some of our friends, they, they ask me, uh, Doctor, what about open-ended question? Doctor, what about ill-structured question? What about well-structured question? There are so many, actually, uh, there are so many terminology used in the market. Uh. Okay, so actually, what I can tell, uh, what I can share with ladies and gentlemen, when we say about constructed response test, uh, we must understand what does mean constructed response. Constructed response means we 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 uh, uh, how to say we require the student to give their answer rather than choose the alternative. So when we say about open ended ear structure, suppose is under constructed terminology used different, but actually the concept are the same. Okay, so sometimes you will see the open-ended question that they mentioned, how to develop the open-ended question. Actually, 
Sometimes you will see their, their, their format is more to the short answer. The answer required is very short. Sometimes you will see that the item is more to the essay, especially for the restricted response essay item. I mean, the uh, the response, uh, they, they have to say the expect from the student is more to the restricted response essay. I mean, short, very short, one paragraph sometimes, you know? Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry, okay? What I want to share with you is, uh, don't worry about all the, this, hey, how, how how to how to develop this? Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? This uh uh item uh what is it? Item format. Uh, we call it as a open ended. What is it? Close uh close uh ended open uh close ended. That one open ended opposite with uh close ended item. So actually the terminology they use, I think we will see how uh, you were confusing. You know. So don't worry. Actually, you know, you know, we categorize it based on the response of the candidate. It is very easy. Okay, so this is what briefly I would like to share with you the first uh, category of open ended questions. Okay, sorry, it's not open ended, about constructed. Sorry, yeah, about constructed. Okay, so this is what we are going to focus today, ladies and gentlemen, is about selected response test I item. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, selected response item we, in term, old term, terminology. Now, today we don't we don't use this one. Huh? So, kalau kita sema literature review, um, objective test, no, we just key in or we key in more to the selected response test item. Okay, so just never mind. We just we just share with you uh, old terminology and new terminology. Okay, ah, uh, so this one we are going to focus. You uh try to, we try to look at the concept briefly. The concept one sentence that students have to select response from the choices or alternative given. We provide. They don't need to write even one word. They just choose this. The uh, how to say this concept we define in such a way like this means we involve a few example of item format as follows: binary choice. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you know what is binary choice, right? Ladies and gentlemen, do you do you know what is binary choice? True. For test, right? Ah, yes, good. Thank you, uh, Dr. Faust. Yeah, true, false, yes, no, correct, incorrect, pick across, right? Ah, that is my, I don't think that we are going to use, right? Very seldom, ah. even secondary schools to teachers also, I will not share in detail about this. Okay, multiple binary choice, I'm going to show you example. Okay, show you example. At least we know, right? Ah, we have to know the family member of multiple choice question. Otherwise, when people ask us, I mean, the whole concept of the paper and pencil test, huh, we only know the multi how to develop the good multiple choice question is not enough. Now we are we need to become a professional assessor. So I want I I, I, I would like to share to uh, with ladies and gentlemen the whole picture. Ah, then you will appreciate and then you will I mean easily for you to how to say to learn others also. Okay, so the third one is a uh, multiple choice. Ah, later. Is our main focus. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm not going to discuss in detail about this. And then the fourth one is a matching item. I, I'm sure you know, right? Matching item. Matching item is about. Uh, what is it? The word. Uh, uh, what is it? The for the kindergarten sometimes uh, and also primary school, isn't it? They have to match. Uh, they have premises. They have two part premises and responses. Okay. Uh, so basically, okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we go back to the concept again. The student don't need to write even one word, right? They choose. We have to prepare the author alternative or the option. We, there are few terminology used, ladies and gentlemen. We try to learn uh, the, the terminologies. Uh, okay, the choices, or we can mention the alternative, or we can use the word options. We provide options. Okay, the student just choose the option provided to give their answer. Okay, so that's why we have the terms selected response. Okay. So, okay, based on, uh, like I say, education assessments, uh, ex, uh, based on our education assessment, very easy. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't confuse, okay, for a different terminology use, okay, but it's sometimes from the internet sources you will see, but don't worry, okay, we actually we categorize, if we understand the concept of this tool, okay, and one of two family under, under this selected response, I'm sure very easy for us to understand others. Okay, uh, so that is no, that is not a problem. Okay, so uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, just now I say that uh, because we worried that 
And maybe some of us that they have no idea about what does mean multiple binary choice item. Binary choice item, we understand, right? I just now say true forecast or yes or no. But for multiple binary choice item, we have the stem at the beginning before we uh, follow us. Uh, so say before we show the questions. Okay, uh, so stem means I mean the story. Okay, stem uh, with the terminology we use stem options alternative okay all these terms uh, ladies and gentlemen we become a professional assessor we must learn it and then we, we when we when we discuss we must apply all this terminology okay so the stem and then followed by the question and then ask uh, the, the statement you can in the statement form or the question form and then the student just give the answer whether is it true or false because it's mal binary choice right uh, so still is under the, the answer is only two, either true or false. So we call it is a multiple binary choice item. Okay, so okay, so after I share with ladies and gentlemen, okay, I, I assume that ladies and gentlemen, we have already we have the idea about what does mean mouth uh, paper and pencil task, and then the two main category of paper and pencil task and then the family members of multiple choice question item right okay good okay so now we now only we focus to the multiple choice questions uh, ladies and gentlemen can you give me one minute nah? sorry yeah hold on nah. hold on one minute nah. Okay, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there is an issue. I think until now, also, people you will see that if you refer from the in uh sources, uh, what is it? The teacher, some studies, okay, you will see that still people critic about NCQ. The limitations on NCQ will limit the students' uh, development of higher order thinking, thinking skill. This is the uh, main issue people this people critic, right. Ah, but still now so there you will see that still MCQ people use it. People apply it, especially if we are in the pandemic uh, period now, right? So that I meant that I share uh, we share with users now in the at the beginning, MCQ still have the strengths, you know, have the strengths. If we people ask us, we as a professional assessor, if people ask us MCQ whether is it can be used to assess horse? Can or not? Can be used to assess horse. So, ladies and gentlemen, suppose the answer is yes. We go back to the what does mean horse, right? Higher order thinking skill. There are a lot of behavior that we need. We we can highlight, right? Uh, especially if let's say the 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 what is it? The the learning outcome involve uh original idea expressions, design the model. Then of course, uh, these kinds of the uh, a uh, higher order thinking uh, level, a uh, higher order thinking skills uh, of the learning outcome uh, may perhaps MCQ cannot cannot be the suitable choice, right? But then if we go back to the, what is it, Bloom taxonomy, then we will see that, okay, I will share now, next, I will share with you, okay, before we go to the guideline, I would like to share with you how actually uh, MCQ can be used to assess higher order thinking skill. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, before we go to share some example, okay, about how actually, how the, what is it, the MCQ can be used to assess the higher order thinking skill, then we have to come back to the learning outcome. That is our main reference. Okay, uh, so learning outcome still is our main reference when we want, want to develop assessment, especially method that we are going to use. And when we think we already, after we decided the method, then we, we have to think the format, item format. 
when we when we say about item format, that is the things that we are going to um, we are going to learn now. Okay, item format means either is selected or called constructed response test item. Okay, uh, so now, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am sure we all are very clear about learning outcome. Okay, and then all of us also are very clear about uh, learning outcome actually can be categorized into three domains, right? Three main domains. There is a thinking, knowledge, cognitive domain, scale, which is more to the psychomotor, feeling, attitude, which is more to the effect, effective. Okay, so learning outcome is not only for cognitive, right? Ah, okay, so. But basically, when we say that uh, when we want to implement paper and pencil tests, uh, most of the times we'll focus more on cognitive, cognitive domain. Okay, uh, so when we discuss, uh, I'm not going to discuss in detail, uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. Uh, for this room, taxonomy, because I, I, I found at CDA they have a, a special workshop uh, con, uh, conduct, conducted to, to share about uh, room taxonomy, right? Ah, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to uh, discuss in detail about this. Okay, I just want to how to say to recall all of us about uh, this uh, Broom taxonomy, the, the old versions and revised version, because I need to link it to our, my, um, my example that I'm going to share. That's why I have to show this uh, pyramid. Okay, so Broom taxonomy, there are six levels. Okay, so MQA now, I, I'm sure our school. Uh, I am I'm not sure about ladies and gentlemen school, but in our school. No, uh, in our school still, uh, we are good. We now we have to use, we have to apply the uh, new version. Okay. Uh, new version. Uh, yeah, Dr. In, uh, no, sorry. Uh, uh, Shima. Now we are already in, I mean, it's not a first slide. Are you in your first slide? Now already. We yes, slide, yes. Eh? I just now, uh, just now, I think just now only because before that I can see all the slides. Oh, uh, so now how is it? Now still on the first slide. I, I'm not sure about the others. Or okay. is it only so, me? uh, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, how about others? Now are you in the, uh, Bloom Ah, uh, yes, uh, correct. Yes. Ah, uh, our, yes, our, our friend now, most of them now in Bloom Okay, thought, maybe I, I will just go out and then log in again. Ah, uh, yes, back yes, again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Doctor. Sorry, sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Broom taxonomy, I think in our MQA now, okay, we have to apply the new one, right? Okay. So, that is a bit different. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have to be very clear the difference. Okay. So, remembering, understanding, I'm going to share with you uh, um, how to say the, the revised version. Uh. Remembering, I mean, just recall the hierarchy. Uh. Remember, re remembering. Understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and the last one is creating. So creating now becomes the top. Huh? Okay, so remembering is the lowest. Okay. I'm sure you, you, you all know about the, the, the concept, huh? the definitions of each hierarchy, right? Each level. Huh? Okay, so okay, so the cognitive process dimension represent okay in hierarchical way, okay, from remembering until creating. Okay. So now we try to share, okay, we try to share uh, some example of uh, multiple choice questions actually can be categorized, can be developed, okay, uh, from the beginning, from the lowest level that is remembering until creating. Uh, now we want, to, we want to share some example. So try to look at this example, ladies and gentlemen. And you and uh, one minute now, uh, then you try to think actually in uh, in what level of uh, based on room revised versions of room taxonomy. I think face to face, uh, if we have this workshop, will be more interesting, right? We can have a uh, uh, direct communication, uh, compare with online, uh, so it's a bit challenging. But never mind, you try. Then, uh, all those you maybe you are not uh you are not going to share with me, but never mind. You share yourself first, and then uh, later I share with you. Okay, can I? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, 
what level actually? So, ladies and gentlemen, why? Uh, what is the purpose I would like to share with you uh, this example? Because when people say about hops, you will see that based on the sources given, normally people will categorize when we are, and also in our MQA, right? Uh, so, when we say higher level, means very, very not very common. Sorry, I go back to the uh, pyramid. Very common. We will say that the highest, the highest level means we can consider as a higher order involved. The element is very obvious. We involve element of higher order thinking, thinking skill, right? So, in the summary, what I want to highlight here, and also we was uh, we we can see based on the our MQA, we categorize the hops based on Bloom Tazo taxonomy, right? Uh, so, I mean, of course. If you ask uh, ask me how you are going to define hops, I will use different model. I am not going to use broom tazo taxonomy. Broom taxonomy is easier for us to categorize item, but the quality of the answer not necessary. I mean, is appropriate. We apply broom taxonomy. That is another story. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, therefore, because like just now the the issue that I highlighted before I show this one is about whether. MCQ can be used to assess cost. So now I bring ladies and gentlemen about the concept of cost. I link it to the groom that's all that's all me. Uh, okay. So when we when we see later when we uh, share the the example, also groom taxonomy can be applied. Okay. Can be, uh sorry can uh groom taxonomy also can be assessed by using MCQ until the from the beginning until the higher highest level. So as a uh, how to say, uh, as a uh, evident, it's not evident. Okay, as uh, to sh clearly the, uh, the the findings show that okay MCQ actually can be applied to develop to develop at all to assess students' hops. Okay, so Bloom does only as a guideline for us uh, to define hops now. Huh? for in this context of uh, our sharing today. Okay, so. Okay, so what about this one? What do you think about uh in, in terms of the um uh, broom that's revised versions of broom that's only in what level? At what level for this uh questions? I'm sure you have you have read this one, Zenit. Yes, very good. Uh yes, uh thank you, Dr. Chia. Okay, so uh yes, Dr. Zaina. Okay, so yes, the uh, they they hey, wait, sorry, yeah. I, I think I uh, I think I, I show you the difference. Huh? Is it this one uh, just now? Is it this one? Correct? Is it? Ah, okay. So, uh, okay. Thank you for your response. So, uh, okay. So now you'll see that. Okay. Judge the sentence in Aichari, right? Uh, judge the sentence in Aichari. So means the, the, the student, uh, to act according, according to the criteria given below. So the below options, there are some criteria that I mean, assume that they have learned it. So based on this sentence, they have to judge. Okay, based on the criteria that they have learned it. So this is the meaning. Okay, so that means the student, they have to show the ability to evaluate when we say that they have to judge because we will, of course, if we want to know the content uh, assessed by this MCQ, we, we don't have here. Okay, so uh, we, we catch the terminology used, the term used, the behavior used, that is they have to judge. Okay, so the ability they have to evaluate, okay, between the cause and effect based on the criteria that they have learned, and then they give their response. Okay, for example. Okay, so what about the next one? Okay, you uh, we we try answer ourselves and then I will show you, then I, I, I will share with you. Okay. Okay, so this one, okay, they need to analyze it, right? They need to analyze the situations, okay? And then they re the situation given is about the story, okay? The story in the stem, okay? When we say stem is the story, yeah? Ladies and John decided, blah, 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 okay? So in a, 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 it is a, they have, they normally we, we need to create the scenario, okay? So if we want to come out the hot Okay, hox item for MCQ, then actually is is quite challenging, huh? It's quite challenging, okay, because the scenario, uh, okay, 
it must be uh, how to say novel, you know, and then uh, supported by sometimes we need to use the quotation. Okay, uh, so this one we, we the we expect the student analyze the situation, right? Just now they already they have the situation they are going to sell blah blah blah, and then they relate it to the material that the the what is it John isn't it? Uh, John have to have to prepare. Okay, have to prepare. So this is more to the when we say analyzing means the student able we can see the students ability uh, their ability to break down okay the breakdown the knowledge okay for example the concept of formula they have learned break down they analyze it into a uh, component and then we able uh, they we able to see that the student have the ability to relate it and discuss it especially when we ask them uh, to to compare the differences or the similarity after they learn A, B, C, D, right? Uh, so when they need to compare, then they have to an analyze it, right? Uh, then they then uh, then they relate it, then show us the com the similarity and the differences. This is what we call it as an uh, analyzing. Okay. So okay, what about the next one? Okay, can I try to think first? I think this one is very easy, isn't it? Right? Ah, this one is easy, very clear, right? Okay, so application, right? Ah, so when we, how to say, when we re require the student, uh, of course, we should have the, uh, what is it? Uh, Assume that we have, okay, we have shared with them certain terminology, a uh, certain concept of formula, okay, and then we try to create a, an, a, the new situation, okay, and then we want to see whether the student able to apply or not, okay, so require the APRI, that is the APRI application. So, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you were uh, like some of our friends during the during uh, the workshop I conducted before, they have the issue about whether is it applications level is considered as a uh, hot. So, you will see that the, re the review, uh, the study, some of the study, they say yes, some of the study, they say no. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we say uh, about this app applying, uh, we must be very clear when we say uh, whether is it can be categorized, it depends on the situation that we provide. If the situation, the problem situation is uh, is uh, old and that they have learned in the classroom, then I don't think that it is a, is a higher or higher level. Okay, so if the situation that we show in the STEM is a novel situation and new situation, uh, then I still, in, from, uh, in my opinion, is considered a higher order thinking scale. Okay, okay, what about this one? Okay, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think this one? I found that this one is also very clear, clear cut. Can you try to share your answer, ladies and gentlemen? Anyone would like to share? Now I look at the chat box. Nobody. Nobody want to share. Huh? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Sambia, uh, Sam, Sarbia. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, do you think that is analyzing? Ladies and gentlemen, I found that also, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, okay, amongst our lecturer also very confusing, uh, uh, to categorize it. <laughs> Even in, for the essay question also, uh, my experience when conducting the workshop about MCQ and also in essay questions, okay, our lecturer, they, uh, sometimes it also confusing, uh, so, uh, how to say, uh, their justification is also in our MQA, right? You will see that the system, okay? Keywords will determine the levels of the item, right? Uh, so, 
actually it's not it, how to say it's not the hundred percent it's not it's a, appropriate what i can say you know because the keywords is only as a guideline for us you know we cannot just simply use the uh purposely use the keyword and then we say that this is it because based on the keyword this can be categorized in the certain level so based on my what i can share with you ladies and gentlemen broom does not mean have the limited limitation we categorize it the items but what about the students quality of their answer and then the, whether is it is it uh, 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 enough if it, let's say we only based on the keyword i mean let's say uh, judge okay uh, analyze we use the word analyze and then we 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 we, uh, we how say we determine that this is in analyzing you know that is the uh, i can see that okay after i share with uh, our friend our colleague in other school also as well i can see that that is a that is a problem there okay so never mind I think uh, maybe I will share with you another new topic about this. Okay, we share together uh, from uh, from different school. That will be more interesting. Okay, uh, so we can we can maybe we can have more knowledge about this. Okay, now we come back to this. Okay, so this one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, is understanding, isn't it? It's very clear, right? So this understanding level, we we expect that we expect that the student they should understand, right? Ah, uh, they they they. I mean, in the old version, is a comprehension, right? If don't uh, they don't understand, then they unable to interpret, right? Uh, it's not the direct. If they memorize it, if they only memorize it, the definition, I don't think they can answer this question because this is a higher level understanding. Uh, uh, what is it? The knowledge or remembering for the new version? I mean, they if let's say they memorize it, ah, uh, then they can answer the question. So this is a higher level, a bit higher, higher level. Okay. Hmm. So this one, like it's a nankan. Pony, ladies and gentlemen, Bagila, uh, you try to give me your answer for uh, one or two of you. Now, mind we now we just sharing, right? It's very informal, okay? I learn from you also, you know. Yeah, yes, very clear, isn't it? Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Ah, yeah. Nah, so pati tadi kata lah kan. Ah, if we we uh, remembering, we expect the student they can memorize it. They memorize, they give back to us. Ah, that is uh, lowest level. Means then. They just memorize, they memorize, they can get answer. Okay. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, you try to understand. At the same time, I try to, we try to revise uh, the, the concept of each like, level. Okay. So this is uh, remembering. Yes, very clear. Okay. Identify. Just identify, isn't it? Uh, okay. What about this one? Evaluating, ah, huh? okay. Thank you for your response. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so uh, okay for this one. Thank you, ah. Huh? Okay, so thank you for the response. Okay, so uh. For this one, the student they have to collect when we want to come up, we want to produce a plan. We want to we want to uh, suggest an intervention. When the student they need to design a model, they need to design something new. Okay, so they have normally they have to collect and then uh, the, the 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 findings or the data or the informations and then they need to put together they collect and then they need to put to put together and then only they can come out the new plan right uh, so this is the concept what we call it as a create creating okay uh, so the ability they put part together okay uh, so uh yes analyze it normally we analyze and then we see the delay relationship now but then the question asked is more focused on the intervention some sort like the plan uh, the decision i mean the the what is it uh yeah they are, they are in their opinion the idea what is the inter 
intervention. So they have to they have to give their option. The answer is more to the inter intervention step, right? Uh, so this is what we call it creating. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, okay now, okay. So uh, there is a uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Just now, what I uh. Uh, what I share with you, okay, what I share with, uh, what we share just now is more to the what uh, 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 um, to show it MCQ actually we can as uh, we can uh, we can develop for different level. That is the conclusion I can make. Okay, so it's not only lower level, but it's very challenging. We agree that to come out the higher order thinking skill level of the MCQ because we understand that it's not only the stem. But also we have to develop uh, to, to create the op, op options. Okay. And then the stand we must be we must have the more to the scenario base. For example, uh okay, before that, I think I have another slide to show huh? what is hot. Okay, so time for this one. Scenario based problem solving. Ah, so hot, uh, sorry, IMCQ also we can have these kinds of scenario based problem solving items some more. Okay. But then the, the the challenge the challenging part is uh, is a uh, quite time consume consuming. Ah, come try to look at example. Okay, you can see that it's a scenario. Okay, don't worry. Ah, I will give you my slide. Ah. don't worry. No need to screenshot. Tapa tapa buat apa apa. I will give you hundred percent of my slide here. Okay, so from time to time you can share. Ah. We share each other, we share, isn't it? We come to this workshop, we want to learn. But after that, we want to refer next time. We don't know, right? Uh, so we share. Anything that you are not clear, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, I'm from school of education study. But then the thing sometimes uh, I know uh, is a limit, uh, it's very quite limited because only from my school to a colleague. But when I conducting this kinds of workshop, uh, as far as I have the chances to uh, to face or to, to meet, you know, to know all the all our colleagues from different school, I enjoy it because I can I can hear different problem, different opinion, different idea from you. At the same time, I found that I learn from you. Because sometimes when I'm not sure, I will email you all, I will try to find out and then I learn new things, you know. Uh, so it's very interesting. Okay, so for me, so far I enjoy, but through online, I'm not enjoying. <laughs> Basically, I cannot see you. I look like I now I'm talking, uh, face the laptop. Okay, it's not face to face. Uh. Okay, so uh, this is a scenario based problem solving. Okay, that means again, you will see that we create the, uh, the, 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 the problem. Okay, we create the problem situations, the problem story, and then come out the create. Okay? Question. Okay, maybe more than more than two or three. Okay, so this is we call it scenario based problem solving MCQ item. Okay, just share with you the format lah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, actually you can see we can come out until five five items. Okay, one scenario. Okay, ah, then we can create five item based on the scenario. Okay, ah, so example. Okay, so now we come to the suggestion. Ah, just now I think I already touched about this one, right? Ah, we go back to the just now I show you different levels of the, the cognitive. Okay, different level of cognitive based on the room taxonomy actually have been proved that can be used. Okay, to develop MCQ. So when we say about hot ladies and gentlemen, make sure that the situation is real world and or not well. They not check ex uh how to say the the situation not yet exposed in the classroom. I mean, new for the student. Otherwise, actually, we cannot categorize as a hot. Okay, so normally, therefore, normally the in the in the stem, the the the, the developer, they they will they need to use some diagram. Okay, some quotations, some pictures, some table and figure to support because the the stem in the scenario base is not that easy, right? We cannot one sentence one sentence to to come out the stem. It's very simple. Like just now, I think I I, I already show you right. Uh, so later you can refer yourself. Uh, you can refer yourself. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, I like I say actually is where theoretically look like very easy, right? And then I I I, I want to share with you actually when we want to come out of the hot MCQ actually it's not that easy. It's very time consuming for me. You know. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen. If we don't have time, don't worry. Actually, we can refer. There are many sources from the net, but very we must be very careful because still 
make sure they align with our learning outcome. Okay, that is uh, important. We need to check carefully. And also, after we learn the guideline, how to develop the good multiple choice question, it's good for us, you know, because we know we have the knowledge. When we want to re uh, use the, 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 what is it, the ready made MCQ question, at least we can modify, we can revise, we can adjust from there. Right? If we don't have knowledge, like I, I later I will share with you the guideline, uh, then even the bad, the, the, the bad item, still we use it, then the validity of the assessment definitely will be lower okay ah, so this is um i mean the knowledge as an assessor we need to have okay so we not we don't expect all our ors here to develop 100 percent original of mcq i i agree that it's very time consuming but we can adapt from the sources okay ah, as long as we know how to revise to modify okay to in, improve it okay based on the knowledge okay so ladies and gentlemen again uh what is it MCQ questions, okay, MCQ question to become a good MCQ question after we developed it. Okay, when we say develop, of course, you can adapt uh, or adopt from somewhere, but make sure align with the learning outcome based on the knowledge that we have learned about the, the, the guideline, based on the knowledge that we have learned about learning uh, group taxonomies level. So we, we very confidently, we can categorize it a fifty item of MCQ can be categorized into one, two, three, four, four levels. Okay, ah, so this is, I mean, to determine the good degree of the value, validity. Mana kita ada masa nak buat 50 item MCQ? Tak boleh, oh. kan? Dia memang buang masa sangat bagi saya pengalaman. Nah, sebab we need to create the, the, the option, not easy. Ya. But we, I, I found that it's easier if we, we modify or, 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 or what is it? Uh, refer, okay? But some of some of the items, of course, we can come out. Okay, we can we can develop ourselves. Let's say you already have the uh, the what the skill. Okay, ah, that will be a different story. That will be easier. Okay, ah, of course, try to develop some. Okay, and then try to adapt some. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, now okay, we go to the main focus. Okay, just now I share with you about uh, what is it? Family of MCQ, right? And then also, I we have shared that MCQ actually can go until different level based on the revised versions of group taxonomy, right? And then we have uh, we have some uh, examples show that scenario based problem solving using MC MCQ. Okay, good. So now I bring you to the main focus that is the guide guideline. Okay. Okay, so I, I bring the, the, the main focus before we learn directly the main, there are, there are quite a number of the guidelines. If you visit the website, if you visit the internet, you will see that if you just start guideline for developing good multiple choice question, ladies and gentlemen, you actually, we will get a lot. We will get a lot. Macam-macam informasi ada, kan? Tak ada masalah pun. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, but I would like to share with you before we go to the light guideline. Actually, the guideline I share with you, I simplified it. I, uh, it's not simplified it. I, because got rep, reputation, ulang-ulang saja, some of the guideline they share, right? right? Uh, so, I try to summarize it, okay? I analyze it and summarize it. I always share with people, all this actually cover all. You know, uh, so it's easier for your job also. Lah. You learn from here, actually you cover. Actually, I can. Sh I am very confident to say that you cover already. Okay, the, the important point you already cover. Okay, so before we go to the guideline, ladies and gentlemen, let, let me share with you these three fundamental principles. Why I need to share with you? Yes, because, ladies and gentlemen, if you miss my workshop, last workshop about AC item, right? Uh, because the AC item is, I think, is the most important item format in our campus, right? Okay, so if you miss, uh, let's say I, I share with you how to develop a uh, short answer, open-ended item, like some of them, they ask me, uh, doctor, can you share with the academic staff how to develop open-ended? Actually, like just now I say actually the same thing. AC item, okay, if you know the like, my like, my workshop about AC item and also I touch about short answer, actually, sama saja, dia punya prinsip sama saja, don't confuse by all this terminology. Macam-macam terminology they use by the researcher, that's it. Huh? 
Okay, so three fundamental principles. Actually, after we learn this, as a professional assessor, very easy. This one, three, yeah? because this one is from the very famous expert I really admire, Nico. Okay, so these three fundamental actually we cover basically all the guidelines to develop all item, all formats of paper and pencil test. Can you understand? These three fundamental principles actually, yeah, after we learned it, we, we, know, we realized it actually it cover all the guidelines mentioned for different item for format. So you will see that the guidelines are you learn uh, even from the sources from internet, mana mana pun dan juga from my part later also. Pin my pin my pun under these three funder fundamentals saja. Okay, so belajar lah ni tiga pan fundamental. Then we understand all oh, lah easy, right? Ah, so this is the thing. That's why I would like to share with you. Okay, so okay, so ladies and gentlemen, three fundamental principle of crafting assessment task. Okay, from the expert, actually, it's not, uh, it's from the Nico. Oh, okay, and Luca, very famous. Okay, so fundamental principle as a professional assessor, when we develop the task, okay, this is the basic that we need to follow based on the Nico and also Luca. Okay, so the first one, okay, the first one, our task, you will see that the three fundamental actually, yeah. They, their main, their concern is about validity and reliability. And like I mentioned just now at the beginning, as the intro, I told you right. In our education assessment, when we do, when we discuss about assessment, we cannot avoid the problem, the issue, our concern about validity and reliability. So, like I like I shared with you just now, also. In our in our curriculum, delivering of curriculum, there are three main components, right? Learning outcome, teaching and learning, and asset assessment. Right. Ah, okay, so you will see that focus on the important learning outcome. Okay. Learning outcome uh, what is it? Uh our MQA now so the outcome based education, right? Based on BICS, right? I think you know, right? I'm not going to touch huh? based on BICS, right? Ah, so big, I mean, align up with what we are going to learn today. Learning outcome as the main reference. So focus, what we say about, when we say about focus on important learning outcome, means the, the main, the main, the, 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 what is it? The, the domain, the important domain, okay? The important content of our learning outcome, okay? So it's a, it's a waste time if we assess the minor points of content. I think this one can be easier for me to bring you to understand clearly about what I'm going to what I'm going to highlight. Okay, content based evidence. Now today, actually, ladies and gentlemen, we are seldom to use the word content validity. We use content based evidence. Okay, ah, so in when we content based evidence of validity, this terminology we use. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, I would like to share you when we say about validity, it's not enough. We just mentioned that content validity. Kalau content validity is okay, then semua okay. No. Content validity is the basic and is so very important at the beginning of prepare, uh, what is it? developing of I item. It's very important. Okay, so now you will see that there are two diagrams. I go back to just now the first fundamental. Diagram A and diagram B. Okay, so the gray color is about, let's say, ladies and gentlemen, we imagine that now we I developed 20 MCQ. Okay, 20 MCQ in diagram A, you will see that they are in, inside the gray color circle. Okay, uh, so for the diagram B, I ha also have 20 item, MCQ item. They are also in the circle, gray color circle. So, which one the coverage is better, ladies and gentlemen? Diagram A or diagram B? When we when we discuss about coverage, means the content coverage. Yes, of course B. Terima kasih. Yes, B. B is better, isn't it? Ah, so, ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to support our and we would like to support our understanding for this point. Okay, for this point. So, the coverage, the important content coverage. We must make sure that we are not going, we know that 
the title, the topic for our course, they are related, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, we are a, as a professional assessor, we also very clear that about formative assessment and also summative assessment, right? Okay, so for summative assessment, ladies and gentlemen, I found that some of the courses, they have 100 item MCQ. 100 item MCQ. I don't know. Look at that one for break sign. I, I notice, ah, uh, 100 MCQ item and consider as a summative assessment. So you imagine summative assessment, you uh, apply, there is not a problem. Now we are not discussing about the assessment method. Nah. Itu bukan cerita sekarang, ah. okay? So you imagine 100 multiple choice questions, we come out to assessing, let's say, have 40 lectures, okay? 14, ah. 14 lectures topic, okay? Ah. So we must be very smart to make sure that this 100 item can cover the important learning out outcome because actually one one topic actually sometimes the content is quite comprehensive for our lecture right uh, depends on your paper lah, okay because like higher level student lah, the third year and also the master quite a lot of things right uh, so that is the we as a what is it we as test developer we as a lecturer we know the content uh much better we are very clear so we have to make sure that we able to cover the important learning outcome. So normally table of specification is extremely very important when we want to develop MCQ, especially for submissive assessment. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, try to come out. Um, you have to, it's not try, you have to come out table of specification if you want to develop MC, MCQ, make it in balance all the important learning outcome we did cover. Okay, so if we highlight the minor point of content, then automatically will reduce the validity of our assessment. Uh, so this is a use, like, go back to this diagram. A, you see, small portions of the content domain cover. Diagram B, 20 items, but we cover wider portion, right? Uh, so the content validity in terms of degree, the B is bad, better. So I think... Others, our others colleagues, they, they, I don't think they know in detail about our course, especially when we are the main coordinator, main coordinator, right? So we know better about our course. So all this, all this stage actually is very important. Okay, we should have a very systematic planning. Like I say, one of the suggestion is we have to come up table of specification. Okay, so the second fundamental alignment, ladies and gentlemen. One of the principles in assessment, we are not going to give proof to the student, especially later. I will share you a very interesting part when we go to the guideline. No clue given. No clue given. Tak boleh bagi clue. Hints pun tak boleh. Tak boleh, tak boleh baik hati, tak boleh kind, tak boleh. No clue given. But we cannot trap the student. Tak boleh memerangkapkan calon. Must be very clear. Uh, this one is the about the task should crafted relevant to the learning outcome. But we cannot teach A, then we assess about B. Okay, uh, we cannot go beyond higher, okay, or lower. I mean, this fundamental mention about the align alignment. Okay, uh, otherwise, if too difficult, they were bluffing, they were guessing, you know, because MCQ, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot avoid the problem of guessing in NCQ, tak boleh, but we can minimize it. That is the, that, that's why we, lead, we need to learn some guideline. Tak boleh, kita, kita, kalau kita tak erti, kita guess juga kan? Ha, I, have, I think all of us have experienced guess, isn't it, in NCQ, right? During our school time, right? Siapa-siapa pun ada pengalaman, kan? Ha, so if we, don't under, if, if we don't know how to do it, right? Ha, so if higher too difficult in terms of the difficult, difficulty, if the alignment not match higher beyond that, then it will happen these kinds of guessing. So if let's say the, the student very lucky, they able to, uh, to guess and then they can get hard marks. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say the student's ability, uh, student A, ability is considered uh, average, but then can score very hard for this test because he is very lucky. He able to guess the answer, you know, uh, good luck, you know. Uh, okay, so what do you think about this assessment? 
actually is if we analyze it in our assessment more based on our assessment uh, model, it's not is it's not where is how to say I'm not I'm not uh, I cannot say that it's not very or valid. The degree of validity is considered low because remember the purpose we have we we come uh, we we how to say we have the assessment is to to assess the students through a bit ability. Okay, so when come to the problem about guessing, okay, the bluffing, that they are goring, their fears model. Ah, so all these factors will influence us to assess the students through ability, through ability. Therefore, definitely will in will we have to say will will uh will affect our uh degree of the validity of the asset assessment. This is what I want to highlight. Okay, ah, so. Maybe you are not, uh, you can you can uh, imagine what is the effect of guessing, okay? Ah, and test wise skill, the pandai lah, okay, and bluffing. Tapi automatically will influence the degree of the assessment because through ability, we are able to assess accurately, accurately of students' ability. Okay, ah, sudah terbalik. Yang lembab punya dapat, maka yang tinggi. Ah, so that is the things. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we hope that we we understand about this concept. Then you appreciate, you under you you understand, and then you can accept why we must be all the things must show very clear. This third fundamental, ladies and gentlemen. See, vocab use don't confuse the candidate. You know, ah, so we as a professional assessor again, our rule we must make sure that the item is clear enough easily for the student to understand we are not going to test their language standard you understand not ah so therefore we the purpose like i said just now we want to test the students ability so if they don't they unable to perform it's not because they don't have the ability but because of the vocab use or the directions we provided Oh, the diagram is very poor. The representations of the diagram show is very poor. And as a result, they are unable to perform. So you imagine whether the assessment, is it able to assess the student's ability? They will. I mean, there is a gap, isn't it? If you analyze it based on a software, you will see there is a big gap. Ah, then there is a problem. Okay. Ah, so when we discuss about validity, ladies and gentlemen, it's not only it's not only about the content, the first fundamental, like I say just now, like I show you just now, okay. But involve all, okay. Until the administrations, okay, we cannot be too kind to give uh, additional information during the administrations of the assessment implementation. Very standard of the pro, uh, assessment procedure we go through when it come to the marking. Of course, MCQ very easy. Machine pun boleh guna. Tak ada masalah kan? Ah, so from the beginning until the end, so the whole process must be in standard. I mean, uh, in a very systematic process. Follow the systematic procedures. Okay. So kalau pensara bagi hints, kalau pensara if our lecturer we bagi hints in the assessment bagi tips sebenarnya adalah sudah me, betul melanggar the fundamental of the essay. Assessment. Remember, our purpose is to assess the student's ability. After we have the data, whether we are confidently to make the generalizations to see that the, this eighty percent of the student achieve the performance. I mean, the achieve the excellence level of the performance. Whether we can make these kinds of a generalization, if we can, we we very confident we can make these kinds of a generalization that the degree of the validity is good if already in the process we have this kinds of problem vocab guna student pun tak faham ni soalan tanya apa lah ni uh what is it lagi um the the, the what the, the question don't understand the instruction provided also not clear okay now, all these things happen in the process then of course when come to the generalizations of the result assessment result, that is the degree of validity is totally, is totally how to say, influenced by the this or, uh, negative factors. 
Okay, uh, so this I want to what will I want to make it uh, all of us clear about the importance of this three fundamental. So, ladies and gentlemen, after this three fundamental, I will bring I will bring you to the guideline. Then it will be easier, much easier for us to understand the guideline. Tak payah ingat pun. Tiga fundamental this one we can understand. Yes, then will be easier for us. Yes, anything that you would like to ask anyone? A negative marking uh, to discuss this this courage guessing. Boleh juga. Got some of our uh, our colleague uh, from uh, what is it from economy? They have this kinds of yes. This is one of the method. Uh, I agree that based on the previous study, uh, the, uh, what is it negative marking? They implement it as one of the method to reduce the guessing. Yes, can okay ah. Uh, they uh actually this one also very 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 common uh. I noticed our 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 friend they asked in the workshop before that. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, two fundamental remember eh? Don't challenge our student by using the 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 higher level of language. Don't challenge our student about the beyond level. Okay, ah, uh, so don't challenge the student with different content. Okay, actually we are out of the alignment okay ah, so this is about the validity okay so format of mcq okay mcq okay ladies and gentlemen mcq format we have to know right okay basically there are two parts okay ladies and gentlemen you try to remember stem and alternative because uh, because after that i will use this one very more very frequent uh. stem means the story i think in the beginning already i i discussed with you right and then we have a list of suggested the suggested solution a, B, C, D. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you will ask me, apa, kalau kamu tak tanya, sekarang saya pun boleh terangkan. Maybe some of you now in your mind, you will ask me, doctor, how many options is better? Doctor, uh, I, tell, uh, I can share with you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, others uh, countries, sometimes they have A, B, C, D, E, F pun ada, A, B, C, D, E, F, G pun ada, A, B, C pun ada, you know, but commonly, normally, okay, after the research done, they found that, Okay, actually it's very com it's very challenging. We want to create the alternative, right? Not easy. Especially after we learn the guideline later. Huh? Not easy to create the good alternative. And then, ladies and gentlemen, one thing is after we run for the first round of our MCQ, do you think that we can direct put in item bank after we follow? You found that yes, very good. Our my I uh, my MCQ all follow the guideline. Um the basic guideline of uh, the important uh, to develop good MCQ uh, or can automatically keep in item bank next semester still can be used. Ladies and gentlemen, please not check, you know, because when I discuss about this alternative, okay, I, 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 I answer the question first. Four to five, this is suggested because we, we it's not easy one thing. Number two is if we have more, they will redundant. You know, the, the contents is very easy, redundant. Redundant content, they will confuse. Like just now we say in the third fundamental, we cannot confuse the candidate, right? Ah, okay, so that is the problem happen based on the research finding. Okay, redundant punya masalah sudah nampak sangat jelas. If we have A, B, C, D, E, F. Sometimes they have an anti F, you know, they have the research they try to see and then redundant sudah nampak lah. Okay, ha, so that is a problem. So uh, D and E is very common. Okay, uh, so it is, uh, we are encouraged to, can, uh, how to say, to create the alternative D or anti E, four to five. Okay, uh, I try to answer all those you don't ask me because based on my previous workshop, okay, uh, people like to ask me this question. Uh. Okay, so this is a, uh, Alternative, okay. So the alternative consists of one answer, okay, uh, and then others we call it as distractors, distress pengang, penganggu, okay. So let's say A is the uh, key answer, we call it key answer. Eh? Uh, so B, C, D, we call it distractors. Boleh ya? Ah, remember all this terminology lah, okay ya? Uh? Distractors, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Now I can share with you a little bit item bank tadi. Okay, so just now I say uh, I I did share with you about what. Uh huh. After we have uh we we uh we found it, we have followed the guideline, and then after one round we use it, then we say that automatic can put in item back. Not yet, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, we need to do some item analysis 
for the for the op option uh, for the distracted bcd just now then i said the answer is a huh? bcd okay we want to make sure that based on the analysis we have briefly we want to see whether bcd have been to have been selected by student or not especially from the lower ability student allow these factors to be to nobody let's say you have the student we have the student 100 through elon they apply this mcq test 100 student b do nobody choose that ah so ladies and gentlemen because why b to table phone no fun no function you understand not and so this we call it is an item and an analysis okay so briefly i, I share with you ah oh those ini bukan macam bukan workshop ini tau tapi tak apa so ladies and gentlemen le, next time you maybe you can jot down ah tak ada duk kat sini eh okay so next time ah you you manually you check macam ni okay so after we we go we keep saya biasa guna e-learn kan we throw mcq kita guna e-learn kan ha it's senang lah kan tak payah stand up kan ah so we use e-learn so we can see ah from the what from the result we can see uh what's the question a uh, sorry sorry example question one lah, huh? question one a is the key answer okay a is the key answer so b c d though we have to check whether got student got candidate they choose or not if let's say i have my my paper is a lot of student 250 sometimes you know so 250 student ah my god nobody choose b Tak ada orang seorang pun yang nak pilih B tu. B tu totally tak ada orang pilih. So, what do you think, ah, ladies and gentlemen? Apakah anggap anggapan kita kalau tak ada orang pilih? Mainlah bagi sedikit respon. Kita beri manually, kita check sangat cepat kan? Ha, kalau tak ada orang pilih tu apa masa? What is the problem? What is the problem? Means the I yeah of course they guess hey guess too tapa guess nah, based on the 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 what is it the reference book ah, in our education assessment ah, guessing ah, you will see that the all uh, the frequency for all the b a b c d ah, is almost the same uh, it was all done the probability will be very high they are guessing can you understand what i'm saying can you understand can i, should I repeat if let's say all the other yes yeah, not related to all uh, no, no. This is, I mean, the possi possibility. Okay. Yes. Correct. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Huh? Okay. Uh, okay. So this is uh, some of the possibility that the problem of the distractors analysis. Okay. So if let's say the frequency for all the alternative, uh, include the key, uh, the key answer, uh, the key answer, the frequency almost the same, uh, then we, we will say that possible the guessing happened. So, ladies and gentlemen, next time you try to check the pattern of their choices. Huh? So, you kita berjaga-jaga. Kita, we do try to look back the distractors. It's sangat, meman, sangat memantu. It's very, it's very important and very useful. So, just now, I, I, I go back. Huh? This, this one, this pattern is for guessing. Lah, huh? probably, probably, the students are guessing. So, you, you have to check back whether is it too difficult or not. The, the question of whether your question is it not clear like just now the third fundamental the language is it confusing okay yeah, you, you we have to check back the stem okay yeah, so this is one problem about guessing huh? i go back to just now i, I ask uh let's say what is it huh? nobody choose b isn't it ah got people choose key answer got people choose c got people choose d but nobody 250 students zero of them they choose b means our this uh option is no fun no function sangat senang pelajar yang lembab pun tak mau pilih ah that is the problem okay ah pelajar yang lembab no ability ya pun can realize that this is not the un answer so no function so no function is it good no we have to make sure all the all the option they are function they are functioning well other the delay they have they will be chosen especially from lower ability student okay ah so let's say another thing ah okay let's say uh one uh one key and a is key answer okay and then another option let's say b ah 
the frequency of chosen A and B yeah, is almost the same. So, apa masalahnya? Apa masalahnya, ladies and gentlemen? If I'm the, why I ask? Let's say the answer is A. So, 200 students. Okay, katakan, uh, let's say 200 students. Let's say 200 students, uh, the key answer is A. Uh, let's say 80 students choose A. Okay, and then 70 students choose B. Ah, then you key in, in the e -learn, you say that A is the key answer, but 70, 75 students choose B. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, when we notice these kinds of problem, we must be uh, we must be careful. We have to check back the alternative. Normally, these kinds of problems happen is about ambiguity, kekaboran, distractors, ambiguity of the distractors. Maybe the meaning of the the, the what is it? the meaning of the content between the option A and B return redundant. Okay, ah, so ladies and gentlemen, can you get some idea? Ah, so you manually you can check it actually. Okay, thank you. Huh? Thank you. Just now, uh, our friend, they had quite some of our friend, they give me their answer very good now nah? because saya tak boleh. I cannot uh, read carefully because I explained here. Okay, so you can check it manually actually. Yeah, okay, oh, actually. In our education assessment, we have the very simple software, very easy software. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you are very good, very expert in computer, okay, and also this program actually sangat senang saja. You can use it, and then the 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 the, guide, the guideline also very simple. Okay, you you try to look through the guideline, you try to understand it, then you copy your data, huh? You pop inside, very easy for you. They they will show you the data analysis. You try to you try to type in the just internet such a you type T A P T capital letter T A P item analysis you type like this. There is software free yeah free don't don't worry free download okay in that ah T A P tap ah ah tap item analysis software you type type like this item analysis software you copy and paste you plop the keluar lah okay and then they will tell you how many choose blah 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 very fast actually if you want to do very fast okay can ah Ah, so just now I did show you uh what is it ah uh? ah like like satu another one I show you four distractors analysis ladies and gentlemen just now I, I show you three I share with you three already right one more last one okay let's say ah uh, because we have the ranking we can see ah uh, the student the good one are uh, the high the high the high mark means we consider 20, 27 percent normally we can cut up uh, twenty seven percent we consider as a higher level ability another twenty seven percent below there we consider the lower. At the middle, we call the middle level. Lah. Okay, so let's say we notice that, okay, the frequency, the student from the high ability choose key answer A lower than the student from the, from the lower le level. You understand what I'm saying? Let's say majority who choose the key answer A though, majority choose A are from the lower level ability student. Ah, so this one also we must be very careful because it's possible misgiving. Kita key answer yang sah, salah. Huh, nah? Ah, okay. Ah, so basically, ladies and gentlemen, there are four types of distractors analysis. Basically, okay. Ah, so I hope you have jot down. So if you have jot down, you use. You use it, you can try actually, you can try manually, you can check. Okay, so you can check and then uh, you can try to improve. But what if all students semua pandai? If semua pandai, tak apa lah, we check, we, we only check, you understand? No? That is, I, I, like I say just now, it's possible. Okay, we are not saying that must happen this time. You understand? No? Because we must be alert, because things we are going to, we are going to keep in item bank. This is our concern because we want to use in future, right? So kita check lah. I mean, at least we do some some analysis, some basic analysis. We, we want to avoid the the problem of distractors. You know, uh, we want to make sure uh, all the distractors are functioning well. This is our our process. It's not only after finish then that the, all you put in item bank. That is not the way. Okay. Ah, uh, so this is the thing. I think saya sudah makan masa lah nanti. Okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, I go back to here. 
because I because that actually item analysis is very important, you know. Because without knowledge about item analysis, all you keep in item bank in future, you never realize that it's a problem there. We never detect the weaknesses of the eye item, you know. Okay, come. I go back to this one. Ah, uh. sorry, yeah. Uh. I, I think I spent 10 minutes already for that. Okay, so uh okay, so ladies and gentlemen, stand. Bawa resetters. Uh oh, we call it it's not resetters, sorry. Resetter, let's say the answer is A. B C D E F is resetters. Alternative A and there F we call it. Direct question. Can you see in the question form? Right. Ah, we have uh, the stand in the question form, right? Ah, then followed by the options or alternative. Okay. So this one. How's that feel? Ah, name. Yeah, they have to continue, right? In complete statement. So this one we call it as a rearrangement form. I think this one very common, right? They have to rearrange. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, then they uh, then they have to choose the best answer. Okay. So substitution form. This one is very frequent uh, in language. And last time I I, I my school time, you know, uh, especially for English. Okay. So uh, item one, item two. This we call it substitution form. So this one is a complex form. This one also very common, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, so they have to choose the best answer. Okay, which one? Is not the answer then you have they have to make sure that uh, they have some choices until five then they give the answer based on the a b c d e so you call it as a complex form okay so we have basically yeah uh, okay basically there are five formats okay ladies and gentlemen this one i would like to share with you this one ladies and gentlemen now today yeah uh, you will see item um mcq have variety of format also so this one i would like to share with you we call it as a two-tier two-tier mcq can you see question number at the bottom there and sorry at the other at, at the what is it uh g at the that followed by answer uh sorry followed by the option there are four options a b uh, it's not they didn't show A, B, C, D. Huh? Okay. So after, let's say the student, they choose 2.4. Can you see 2.4? Ah, then the student, they have to give to, to choose the reason why they choose 2.4. Step 2. Can you see step 2? Step 1, step 2. According to the chosen, chosen answer, the student required to choose a reason for the selection. So if they choose b what is their reason come up number blue the blue color and then for the c i have to say c the easy ah. the purple color they have to give reason and then d they have to green color they have to to select the read their reason so the teachers they have the the the, the, the assessor they have a, uh, a a better more detailed information in terms of the students understanding okay ah, so if they choose a Lucky, they have to show their reason based on the choices given. So this we call it as a two-tier, two-tier MCQ. Uh, this is what my student do. Okay, so another one I, I show you. Ini lagi mencoba. Three-tier. Ini lagi, as my PhD student, they try to develop this one. Okay, so this one, student choose answer. Uh, A, macam tadi lah, uh, like just now. Uh, and then they have to give their reason, right? And then C, uh, step C, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you just focus on step one, step two, step three. Don't need to read the question. Uh. Don't waste our time to read the question. This one is an uh, example. It's only example. Don't need to read. Uh. So don't need to put, as is, let's say you want to use this one. I think we we, we state A, B, C, D rather than bullet. Uh. Okay. Uh, so easier for them to choose, right? We put A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D, every, everyone. Uh. Not, no, it's not a uh, bullet. Lah. Okay, so C, step, uh, sorry, step three. According to the reason, the, con the student have to choose us. They are certainly for the selection. Whether they are confident, not confident, uh, unconfident, and so on. Okay, uh, so this we call it as a three-tier. Just now, two-tier, you need to three-tier. 
So you will see that now today there are a variety of MCQ actually. Okay, this is a consider is a new format. Okay. Just want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry, ah. Huh? Just because uh, we as an assessor, we we need to know more, right? Huh? So next time when people say about this one, at least you have some idea, right? Uh, okay, sharing side to other Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, now we go to the guideline. Don't worry about the guideline. Actually, just now the three fundamental. Actually, we already covered basically. So now we only focus one by one by one. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I, like I share with you just now, in MCQ, basically there are how many part MCQ? Berapa? Meh, bagi tahu saya ada berapa part MCQ punya pan format ada berapa part? There are how many part in MCQ? Yes, very good. Thank you, Dr. Chia. Lucky, saya dapat jawapan betul. Masih untuk kat lecture tu. If they don't know how to answer, I sakit hati. Okay, see, thank you, Dr. Chia. Yes, there are two parts. Right, correct. Stem. And also, alter alternative. Okay, so why I need to ask you, you know, because when I go through one by one the guideline, we will focus into these two two parts. Stem. Now, sekarang, I now we we were going to con focus about the guideline for constructing an effective stem. Later, second part, we try to focus about constructing an effective alternative ah okay so i why i need to explain first because i don't want you are confusing when i go through guideline one two three four five my you should have sample understand not ah, so that's why i explain first okay two parts okay so stem after stem we go to alternative all right good okay so can you see what is the problem Stem, ah, stem. Ladies and gentlemen, I assume that now you understand all this terminology. Eh? Ah, we have to we have to use, we have no choice. Ah? We as a professional assessor. Okay, you understand ah, stem. When I say stem, don't, don't I assume that you know what I mentioned about stem. What is the problem about stem? Any problem about stem? You see how many words in the stem? Only? Only one word, isn't it? Chemical. So it means that we expect the student to find the answer by reading all the other alternatives and then try to understand what actually what we are going to ask. We, we cannot waste their time. You know, uh, we must make sure they are clear, everything clear, easier for them to read, easier for them to understand. We are not going to trap them. All these things we must follow. The three funder fundamental still remember uh, so you will see that when i show you the guideline uh, you link back to the only three fundamental forever you can uh, you can remember okay uh, so uh, always i tell my student tolong jangan hafa. understand that will be easier okay okay so okay so you will see now this one should present yeah, I try to check, but is it for us to provide more than one answer? Uh, yes, there is a question, the same questions. So in terms of if we let's say you want to, you must make sure that it's not that easy. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you, if you want to come out the uh, question that have more, more than one answer, right? Uh, so uh, make sure that, again, the distractors that you create must be very careful, okay? And must be very clear no confusing no ambiguity of the meaning okay you can but uh, it's a bit challenging huh? if, if let's say one or two okay but let's say you have 50 items imagine all the question you have more than one un answer so sometimes uh, the in terms of the redundant you know uh, redundancy of the meaning uh, for the option happens so you are allowed or you can but again, must be careful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So come back here to this one. Should present a query described past. Satu perkataan. Mana student tahu apa yang nak tanya kan? America saja kan tadi. So that the student can, when read the stem, they have the idea what actually, what to ask. And then they only, best, no, then uh, the correct way, the, the correct way is after they understand, then they choose the author, alternative. It's not based on the alternative to guess the answer. Okay, uh, so this is define the task clearly in the stem. Boleh ya? 
So Jiang Han satu perkataan macam ni lah. How? So no meaning. It means that your effect, your stem is not effective. Okay. Ah. Okay. So stem lagi ya. Stem lagi. Jangan risau lah stem lagi. Ah, apa ni? Meh. Bagi tahu. Apa masalah ni? Boleh detect tak? Kita boleh detect tak? You you try to recall back the three fundamental ah. Tiga saja kan? Apa yang masalah ni? Siapa siapa? Siapa boleh detect? Yes, confusing. Why is uh, Dr. Sabri confusing? Yes, thank you, Dr. Nazri. Yeah. So what should we do? Third fundamental. Yes, not and accept. Yes, correct. Negative word must be very careful use, when we use negative word. Seperti tadi kata, we are not going to trap them, you know. We cannot confuse the candidate. We must make sure easily for them to understand and clearly for them to be read. You know, uh, so if we let's say we have we need to use the negative word, so we must un underline it and cannot double negative word, of course. Okay, uh, so if we actually we are not encouraged to use negative word, but if we want to use it, we underline it, we italicize it, we bold it, we capitalize it. Okay, uh, so this is uh, all the things that uh, we must be very careful. Okay, so cannot use double negative, but if double negative, then co very confusing, isn't it? Uh, you want to test their confu their confusing level or we want to test their ability. Uh, that is the thing. We go back as a assessor. The purpose of the asset assessment. Okay. Must say STEM. Huh? Okay, what is the problem? This one? Very easy. Like I think uh, quite uh, similar with the first one, right? Which is the following is a true statement. Means uh, is no how to say present must a specific pro problem show in the STEM. Focus on the learning out. Outcome, betul tak? Ah, if the stand like like this one, actually, what are the learning outcome we are going to assess? Like we say just now, table of specification we need to prepare for each MCQ questions. When we before we develop the MCQ question, so the arrangement, so how how these kinds of item can be categorized, isn't it? Ah, so what we want to highlight here, the stem must clearly define. And meaningful. The important thing is here. The important point that we want to highlight must be meaningful. Problem allowed to focus very clear. Show the assessment of certain learning outcome. Okay, uh, must a clear problem. Okay, stem lagi ya. So what about this one, ladies and gentlemen? Ini pun sangat senang kita boleh nampak kan? What is the problem? Nampak tak? Sudah boleh nampak? Yes, very good. Thank you, Dr. Nazri. Yes. Janganlah panjang sangat. Penat mereka baca ni masa tak cukup. One minute, one MCQ, isn't it? Normally, ah, sometimes I can see 100 item. Ah, very fast, you know. Sometimes two hours. So it means that the student, ah, they, they, they have, if we come out this stem, ah, the long, too long. Ah, so if possible, they have no time to finish all. So, rugi lah, isn't it? Because the, the, in this, let's say majority, they are unable to finish all. So, we can say that the, in the end, uh, the whole assessment uh, is considered few, you know. Uh, so, we must be very careful. Uh, straight to the point. Okay? Jangan cakap panjang-panjang. Okay? So, jangan terlalu panjang lebar lah. Uh, it's not the important point. Don't mention that. Okay? So, this is the decrease the reliability yeah, lah. like just i say isn't it they have not enough time they're unable to finish then in the end they guess right uh, and either really the cut the cut the cut more uh, that is i mean that the is the, the effect is very bad lah. okay so now we go to the alternative okay we go to the uh, alternative try to look at this one ladies and gentlemen and then try to give your uh your view Giving cool, ah? Yes, Dr. Chia, why you say giving cool? So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, giving cool, isn't it? Which one? Okay, let's let's say uh, in our based on our experience, uh, if 
I don't, we don't know how to answer this question. So normally which one we choose? Huh? And, uh, ah, yes, yes, it's a crew. Yes, uh, and yes, yes, very good. Thank you. I, okay, yes, another crew. Huh? Crew given articles, a uh, and n. We can use a uh, slash n, uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, to avoid crew. No crew given, but we are not going to confuse it. This is our principle, okay? It, you, you, we have to remember whatever item, okay, whatever item for format. No crew given, especially for this selected response test. They will guess. But we want to minimize. We, what we can do is minimize it. We cannot avoid. Okay. So article is one of the very core common. So we put a slash n. Huh? Okay. So another cool besides article, ada lagi tak? Tengok siapa boleh dapat. Besides article, ada lagi tak? Any problem? This letters. Now we go about, uh, sorry, alternative. Huh? It's not stem. Huh? Has. Hmm. the type of standard type test okay because b is a look like case study huh? so you yes i i, I agree also so you standardize uh use the consistently yeah don't know who give it even the or the or the, the word that you use in each alternative yes i already nampak dr najri they must say yes you see the land of the options it's not equal isn't it if i am i know no, don't know how to answer i will answer i will, will normally like it Common sense, isn't it? We will choose A, right? Macam cik, susah-susah cari kat panjang-panjang tu, the possibility is a correct answer, isn't it? Ah, so A, right? So maybe you will say that, no, 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 no. A is not the answer, but don't confuse the candidate. We make it standard, right? Guys, the length for each option, we make it standard. Equal in terms of the length. Although it's not the answer. And also articles is now. Thank you. Uh, you see, all of you very good, very sharp. You see your observation, and then the use of the term of the task. If if okay, if possible, we make sure all oh, cover. I mean, we have standard the terminology used for each options, right? To to avoid guessing. Okay, very good. Uh, this best is very good now. Huh? Very good now. Huh? Your, your observation very sharp now. Huh? Okay, so next one. Huh? the main concern here we want to highlight is option length. Okay, uh, option length. Biar bagi semua sama panjang. This, uh, so all the options, we 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 want to avoid clue. Eh? Like just how we say, eh? no clue given. Okay, so this one, okay, ladies and gentlemen, some this one, our Elon, no problem, lah, isn't it? But uh, for for let's say it's not in Elon, okay? So, Ah, uh, yeah, lah, long answer. Right, lah, like I just now, I, I told you my experience. Last time, I don't know how to answer. So the longer one, uh, we, will, we will guess is the correct answer, isn't it? That is a very common sense, isn't it? Uh, that's why I say, but some of the some of our friends say, no, 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 no. The answer for the longer one is not the answer. That means, mengapa nak susah-susah kita nak memerangkap pecalon, kan? Tak boleh lah, kan? If not the answer for the longer one pun tak betul, tak boleh. Kita, we have to follow the principle. Kita tak memberangkat, but kita tak bagi sebarang crew. Uh, that is the correct principle based on educational assessment. This is a, I I keep on highlight because it's very important because the main concern is the valid validity. Okay, uh, so I am sure, ladies and gentlemen, now you understand better about the validity of assessment after I share with you until until now. Okay, so ah uh, this one, so this one ah uh, is um you try to understand. Tak payah saya baca tu penat lah. You try to understand this. Ah, this one ah, we cannot ah. Sometimes ah, the lecturer they want to make their job easier. It's not lecturer lah. Okay, school teacher also same. They want to make their uh our job easier. So we we create the pattern for the correct answer of A A B C D A A B C D. Tada. Ah, so. The, the, the assigned for the correct answer uh, suggested here if A, B, C, D, uh, we train 25, A is the correct answer, 25 for B, 20 for D, and C, and then random, randomly. Tak boleh create pattern. So imbalance in terms of option A is the answer, got 25%. Faham tak? Kalau boleh lah, it's possible. And then the most important, don't create the pattern for the correct answer. Easier for us to mark, let's say, right? Ah, tapi the weak student, mana tahu they can detect your pattern, dapat 100 makaro, betul tak? 
Ah, uh, your answer may maybe A A B A A B C D A A B C D. So that kali you repeat repeat the pattern already come out right. Uh, so this uh, I noticed my school time my my teacher in Ilan. Ah, uh, yeah, in Ilan, yeah, the I say just now in Ilan there is no problem. In Ilan, no problem. I mentioned just now, isn't it? In Ilan, no problem. You know, so so last time my school, I I still remember my teacher. They he ha he has the pattern for the correct answer. You know, so all of us score very high. You you, you cannot understand underestimate our student. They are very smart one. You know, ah, uh, so this is what we suggested. Ah, uh, be careful. Okay, when you assign the correct an answer. Okay, so alternative ah, huh? ah, uh, this one what yeah ah uh, okay this one. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, based on the expert, they advise advice uh, their advice is we are not we are not uh, encouraged to use the distractors for it's not distractors for options for all of the above or none of the above. Based on based on their finding, they found that these are the weak alternative because one, maybe the student will simply have to find two defensible, although they not confident whether all are not all in the above okay so two defensive options so they automatically they can choose all of the above because a uh, without to make sure whether they can really understand all two consider already they can get the correct an answer okay a and b they they, they are sure is a defensible option so they will choose all the above right? because if they cannot choose a and b what understand not ah so what I what what we want to highlight here based on their finding, try to avoid using all of the above or none of the above. Okay, maybe we'll confuse the candidate, or maybe they uh, how to say uh will uh, will 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 make that easier to get the answer without fully understanding. Okay, so this is what they want to highlight. Okay, so huh, what about this one? A better or B better between A and B? Which which one you found that is better? Which one is better? Better, in your opinion, which one is better, A or B? Yes, Doctor Chia, and thank you, thank you. Tiga orang empat dah atau terjemilah terima kasih. Yes. Kita tak cerita dulu ah biar let uh, our friend to choose nah some already choose A, I see how many to ah uh, some already choose B macam macam kan ah uh, based on your based on your observation okay doesn't matter. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, A or B? Ada orang kata A, ada orang kata B. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you see A. You you try to look at the options. Largest producer of potato, location of the tallest mountains, state its flag. Ah, macam macam kan? The option is very wide scope, right? But B, you will see the choices is more to the RV. How sure, isn't it? Ah, so therefore, which one is better? B is be better, isn't it? We are going to be fo focused. So let's say when we want to analyze the students' weaknesses, also very easy for us to detect their weaknesses. Okay? Ah, so if we, our options is go too many scope, there will be difficult for us uh, so the on uh, content not okay so it means that it means that when we create the distractors the, the spam must be focused and then of course the distractors you jangan pergi jauh sangat if you go far away sometimes most of the times easier for them to guess also okay uh, so you make it focus okay either stem or also Distractors. Okay. So this one, ah, yes, homogy, homogeneous. What we call it should be homo, homogeneous in all content. 
Okay, uh, so like I said just now, we will provide cool to the student. They will guess, right? isn't it? Easier, easier for them to guess. This is one of the guidelines. Suggested is uh, is also very important. So, okay, avoid overlapping content in the outer alternative. Uh, like I say just now, actually not that easy. Out of the idea sometimes. Okay, uh, so when we create the distractors, especially answer, no problem. Normally we only have one answer, like our e-learn, right? Uh, so when we come to create other distractors, uh, we never realize that sometimes we, we don't realize that overlap in terms of the meaning. Okay, uh, so they will when come out to the item analysis that I share with you just now, distractors analysis, overlap the answer, the frequency, choose A and B, almost the same, right? Uh, like just now, right? When we learn about item analysis at the beginning. So this problem will happen. Okay, so uh, how to say? Uh, waiting, uh, when waiting so Orlando, we, we, we need our colleague really to be to check also the this the all the options. It's not only the stems, right? So waiting so online MCQ to memang pending lah kan. So if we have the colleague who are who have the knowledge about um uh, to develop MCQ format as M MCQ item format, they will help us mm, how to say to detect easily. Okay, ah, uh, so because we ask others people read sometimes easily to detect rather than ourselves, right? So maybe our co-coordinator, okay? So this thing will happen. So if let's say this kinds of problem happen, you, you, we did, we, without doing the item analysis, we keep in item bank and then we again repeat, repeat, we use it. Then kita tak tahu, actually we have a few items already, re, already influence the, item, uh, the validity of our assessment. So effect to the sub juga, you know, uh, because the value validity. So it's a, it's a very important, ladies and gentlemen, item analysis, all those, I, I, uh, it's not our focus today, but still, I hope that manually you try to check it based on the four distractors analysis this time I share with you. Huh? Kita manually check, kita boleh dapatnya. Huh? Kita boleh kesan. Okay? Uh, so constructing effective alternative. I mean, I think alternative to penat nak baca kan. Tak dapat A. If let's say our answer is E. Let's say we have E. Dua minit baca pun tak habis lagi. Kan? Uh, it's too long. Okay? So, work the alternative clearly must be shorter. Okay? Must be shorter. Okay? So, this one, uh, like stem also, cannot be too long. Also, the distractors cannot be too long. Okay? Waste their time. Okay? So, this is the number six. Okay, so what about this one? Ladies and gentlemen, now we are uh we are at the constructing effective distractors, uh, uh or alternative, sorry, alternative. So what about this one? Can you detect any problem about this one? Napa lah? Ada apa apa? Yang yang tak kenal tu, yang rasa tak kenal tu. <laughs> no size of glass. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, can you can you see? Okay, five, one, three, four, two. So sequence, yes, yes. Mengapa kita nak mengelirukan calon kan? Ini bukan kita nak 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 apa tu? We want to measure their carefulness kan? We want to measure their ability, ability. So jangan lompat lompat macam ni lah kan? Mengapa kita nak sengaja lompat lompat macam ni kan? Nah, ini pun present the answer. In each of the alternative position, in logical or order, yes. Okay, buatlah betul-betul ikut urutan. Huh? Like, we go back to the fundamental, third fundamental, ladies and gentlemen. You see, when we discuss the guideline, actually, always we go back to the fundamental. Kan? Huh? That's why I say the three fundamentals, sudah pimai-pimai pun tangtu aja kita when discuss guideline. Even for the essay question, it went for different item format. Okay, so present in logical. Make sure our candidate clearly, easily for them to, to read. This I keep on mentioning uh, a few times already, right? Okay, so additional guideline, single problem. Ladies and gentlemen, just now we, we concern, our concern is homogeneous, specific, remember? Specific, okay? Jangan tanya macam-macam. They put me otak, they, they already very confused. So you imagine how they are going to choose, okay? I mean, one, I mean, aspect that you want to ask, in one question, nah. you're gonna say no, don't ask so many. Let's say you want to have uh you can have scenario based 
problem solving like just now I show you uh, and even uh, yes uh, you can have a scenario and then come out different MC kill this is uh, what I mean and I said oh, uh, it's not one MCQ you ask Macha Macha okay uh, so single make it specific look at okay look at the easier for them as consistent with the level of understanding okay one correct answer normally lah. okay if you want more than one also can but be, be, must be careful your preparation okay so the term terminology are sometimes frequently if possible try to avoid and also negative word okay uh, so now we go to the it's very important we need to know the advantages for mathematics and subject we can use right so can be used uh, this is the beauty the power so far okay still can hear me or not because some say say yeah say see now okay already. Can I? Ah, uh, no, no problem. Uh. Okay, so ah, uh, okay, so the powerful, the beauty of MCQ is, ladies and gentlemen, the co coverage, the content coverage is very good. You see, ah, uh, one hundred item like just now I say, one hundred item we can develop. Let's say we ask the students within two, two hours, two hours. If let's say they manage to finish. 100 item you imagine the content coverage for our submittive assessment submittive huh? you know submittive and right? uh, submittive assessment you see the content coverage how what we can cover am i right if let's say ac i compare to selected response huh? selected response test item they say selected response test item they say how many is it they can they can produce within two hours so of course the content coverage can compare if we want to compare with the MC, uh, selected between selected and constructed. Uh, so you can see the beauty of the selected response test item. So if let's say the content coverage is better, when we want to discuss about the content-based evidence of the validity, there is, there is much better. The degree is high, higher, especially for the summer, summative. When come to the MQA, when we when we stay the final exam, so some of the some of the people they have ah uh, COVID nineteen uh, I say face to face ah uh, final exam okay so some most of us we develop uh, uh constructed response as I am right it's again go back and the essay so again. Ah, so kebanyakan most of us only essay. So we consider that one is a submotive assessment. If your submotive, our assessment is only based on the two or three or two essay question, do you think that it's considered to, is, is it appropriate to, to, to be considered as a submotive assessment? Actually, it's no. What the, what is the concept of submotive assessment? Sometimes I feel that there is a confusing among our colleagues. Summative assessment, the definition, the concept is overall, we want to see the overall of the student's performance. Am I right? So let's say you say, let's say I, I, I found that there is a there is a some problem about that part, you know. So when we say that we defend that. Others LO will be covered by using quiz, by using a uh, mini test. That is not the, I mean, uh, the, the argument. Lah, okay, one of one, number one and number two, LO will cover using mini quiz or mini, uh, mini report. So the final only actually works in our submitted assessment. So do you think that is submitted assessment? Actually, we still cannot put it as a summative assessment. Summative assessment, the concept we want to we want to assess the student's overall performance for the particular course. 
So still consider actually is a formative asset assessment. So I can see that that is a problem. Do do you think that? Uh, uh, do you do, can do you agree what I'm saying? So I, I found that that is a uh, uh, what is it? Uh, the meaning, the concept, okay, the application of the concept between summative and formative, and also the 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 what is it? The exam format for the uh sub uh submative. There is some mistake, okay. There is uh, some mistake, huh? Okay, this is what I can share with you here, lah. Okay, so mungkin kawan kawan kita sini, our our friend here, you try to think about this. Okay, so actually it's not considered final exam. We we categorize, we simply categorize as summative, you know. Even in the MQA, we state that, right? So do you think that 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 data we can we can generate it and we can interpret it as an overall performance of our student? Bukan kan? So we we argue that LO one and two we already settled. This one maybe you say LO three and four only in 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 this uh final final semester exam. Okay, ah, itu lah masalahnya saya nampak. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, kita fikir sama-sama eh. Okay, so advantage ah broader sample. Yes, let's say answer now is answer. Okay, can you can you you can okay so but see you thank you for coming this was up the talk okay so this one validity sample you see now like I said uh, I asked this now at the beginning why we still use MCQ right ah uh, because about a lot of sample we involve right through Elon you see so easy so convenient isn't it I have two hundred fifty can ah uh, so we use MCQ still is convenient and then the objectivity is higher and then the content coverage is also better so, but then the reliability uh, when come to the scoring is very consistent isn't it uh, we key in and then the you see the word objectivity of the score scoring compared with the constructed response test item so like i say there is no perfect method ladies and gentlemen we must know the pro and con list so that only when we decide that will be better for us for i mean uh, uh more appropriate okay so the limitation Yes, like I said at the beginning, I think I will share with you the Bloom taxonomy, right? Horse. Now, so then many people say about the development of horse. So when we when we discuss about horse, the behavior of, that we may state in our learn outcome, there are variety. But when come to the display their thinking process to perform their task to produce their idea to provide example, of course we cannot use MCQ again if our LO is uh, in, I mean in such a way on this aspect, okay. But still, there are some of the higher cognitive process still can be assessed by using MC MCQ. So, ladies and gentlemen, as a professional assessor, when people, I, I think very common people like to ask the question, MCQ, do you think that can be used to assess box? Ah, you answer macam ni saja lah, kan? Ah, macam ni saja lah. Itulah yang paling perfect, kan? Okay? So, because I always go when I conduct workshop, ini is a, a, lot, a hot issue people want to discuss, you know, uh, link to the hot, so when come to link to the hot. That's why I share with you here, Make sure we all of us say we understand, okay? Ah, then easier for us to answer because we we also want to become a professional assessor, right? Okay, so yes, reliability will be influenced when come to the get when we have to get guessing, okay? So try to minimize the guessing. We cannot avoid, okay? When come to the selected response test item format, we cannot avoid. Then student must be guessing lah, tak payah tulis apa-apa kan. Tak tahu jawab, guess lah mana satu teka, ABCD kan. Nah, so this kind, but we minimize it like I have shared with you kan before, we avoid guessing, okay. Nah, so if guessing, if there are a lot of guessing, so we reduce the, the consistent, the consistency of our assessment, okay. Nah, and also, ladies and gentlemen, item analysis, I share with users now, oh, timing sangat cepat, cukup-cukup. Uh, yang tu lah saya suka. Okay, so if I, like I say just now, uh, what is it? Ah, uh? ah, uh, the item analysis. Okay, I, oh, 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 those just now are very brief, but I hope that you have learned. Okay, ah, uh, the empat tu kan? Itu empat saja. Don't worry, nah. Item analysis itu empat itu saja. The there are four. Okay, distractors analysis too. So, ah, uh, so you try to look. Okay, you try to check. 
Okay, uh, so you if you can detect, then you cepat cepat tengok balik receptor tu, ha? atau stem tersebut. Boleh tak? Uh, so it's very helpful for us kalau kita nak step simpan dalam item bank kita kan. Ha? Kita simpan lah yang baik. Jangan ulang-ulang dah tak sedar kan. We try, we, re, we reuse, we reuse and never realize or ever never realize how many semester we use, right? Uh, so, we, and, and also we never realize it actually influence the assessment. The rarely validity. Kan? Uh, itulah yang kita tak mau kita nak cuba elak, kan? Uh, we as a professional assessor, we know the step at least lah. We, we know how to apply it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do you have any, uh, any questions? Sekarang pukul 12 kan? Ah, enam enam ah. Ah, tepat-tepat pukul 12 cantik. Any question? I hope that you have learned, ladies and gentlemen, you have learned something. And then the limitations uh, I apply this, uh, we apply to online is I cannot, you you are very, you are quite quiet and then we cannot share. It's face waste then it's very interesting. I, I really enjoyed it, you know. Ah, I really enjoyed it. Okay, so uh, tak apa lah. Uh, some of you I I I kena pun. I tengok nama I kena pun. Okay, so itu saja, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you have any problem, if you need uh you need help, okay. Uh, we learn actually kita belajar sama-sama, kan? Ah, uh, kita belajar sama-sama. So uh, kalau ada apa apa atau nak tanya saya apa apa kan kita semua kelik walaupun tak sama school, school saja kan tak sama sekolah tapi kita sama sama kan oh, actually we learn each other kan I, I, I learn from you also that's why I say face to face ah lagi saya enjoy okay so tak apa kita belajar sama sama if you have any problem you can email me I try my best to help you this is my practice until now okay so after I I, I some of our friend if they still they have a problem they email me, I try to help you. If I'm not sure also, I can refer at least can. Uh, then I learn the new thing. So because different schools, sometimes the practice is different. I very, I can see the difference, you know. And then that's why I say I learn from you also, you know. Uh, so kita sama-sama belajar lah kan. Kita dalam satu campus yang sama kan. Kita sama belajar. Okay, I have something new. I have, this is only sharing lah, knowledge sharing lah, what I know. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for coming to this workshop. I hope that at least lah, kita belajar sikit-sikit na. Dapat belajar, tak buanglah masa 2 jam ni pun kan. <laughs> Itu sahaja. Terima kasih. Uh, so I pass to uh, Wani. Wani ada tak? Okay, thank you doctor for today's session. Okay. okay. Uh, Tuan Puan peserta uh, uh, boleh scan QR code seperti yang dipaparkan sekiranya ada masalah untuk scan boleh klik kepada link tu dan link tu akan bawa kepada MyCPD dan MyCPD tu bila Tuan Puan scroll down akan jumpa e-survey tu lah untuk diisi, dilengkapkan. Terima kasih. Okay terima kasih semua. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Uh, kalau ada yang bermasalah untuk scan QR code atau gunakan link, uh, mohon maklumkan ya sebab kalau tak dapat sahkan uh, kehadiran ni, nanti tak boleh nak buat e-survey dan mata CPD tak boleh nak diberikan. Kalau nak scan QR code tu, kena pakai uh, apps uh, Passport USM. Masuk apps Passport USM, lepas tu klik dekat My CPD. Dekat My CPD tu nanti ada check in. Bila 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 klik check in tu nanti ada scan QR code. Di situ baru, uh, baru boleh scan QR code ni. Kalau ada yang bermasalah, kalau uh, minta tolong mute ni, saya cuba bantu tengok.
Dr. Farid guna apps passport ke? Passport USM? Uh, kalau guna link tu, bila-bila uh, uh, maksudnya uh, kalau boleh access e-survey tu maksudnya Dr. Dok, uh, Farid dah scan lah tu. Sebab kalau tak dapat tak sahkan kehadiran memang takkan boleh buat e-survey tu. Kena sahkan kehadiran dulu menggunakan uh, uh, QR code ni ataupun link. Kalau tak memang tak boleh buat e-survey. Uh, Miss, um, saya dah pun ya, uh, scan QR code tu. Uh, memang uh, guna kan. pasport uh, pasport USM ya yeah, Prof. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Uh, tapi okay. tak, tak nampak e-survey form tu. Ada uh, uh, kalau Prof guna guna uh, pasport apps tu, uh -huh. uh, dia uh, bila kita masuk kat MySpD bila kita dah scan tu kan, uh -huh. uh, dia kat bawah sekali tu dia ada survey. Uh, biasanya macam tu dia akan tunjukkan green button dah selesai ke tak tapi kali ni tak. Dia, 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 uh, dia sebab dia. kalau guna pasport tu dekat bawah sekali dekat phone kita dia akan ada dashboard, check in uh -huh. dan survey. So bila kita klik uh, survey, uh, sepatutnya kalau Prof dah, dah scan tadi dia akan keluar tajuk khusus yang hari ni lah dan boleh klik dekat situ untuk oh, jawab uh, e-survey. Uh, I mean dekat pasport sekarang. Betul-betul kalau dekat pasport tu pun uh, kalau dah guna yang pasport yeah, tadi yeah, boleh jawab survey di situ saja. Puan, uh, macam mana kita nak pergi dekat pasport ni? Yeah, yeah. Mana exactly untuk untuk tekan untuk QR code tu? Untuk uh, okay. scan QR code? Okay, kalau kalau masuk melalui pasport USM apps okay. Kalau kita buka pasport USM app, okay. kita akan nampak profil kita kan mula-mula yeah, yeah. Lepas tu dia akan ada tiga garis di bahagian kiri Okay, eh di bahagian uh, kiri uh -huh. uh, Kita akan nampak MyCPD kan? Yes kita klik dekat MyCPD, lepas tu di bahagian bawah ada check-in. Oh dekat check-in ni. Ah dekat check-in, bila kita klik check-in ada scan QR code. Okay. Ah dekat situ kita tekan situ dan scan QR code ni. I see. Okay, masalahnya bila I buka e-survey ni, dia tunjuk I tak register kehadiran. Tapi I dah scan, dia kata dah. Hmm, pelik. Uh, kan senarai kehadiran kalau uh, Prof Prof Sri Mala tu memang dah ada dah dah masuk dah. Ya, ada masuk. Tapi hmm. dia I buka e-survey, dia bagi I red button. Dia kata kat sini um, anda perlu memenuhi kehadiran yang ditetapkan bagi membolehkan pengisian e-survey. Ya sama sama ini, saya prof, pun prof, same, prof, same problem. Prof dah ada 1S eh. Dah ada. Dah ada 1S. Uh, Wan ni klik e-survey tak dekat MyCPD tu? Ah uh, dah dah klik. Uh, kalau dah lekat uh, kehadiran tak apa kita tengok dulu nanti uh, uh -huh. Kalau yang mana yang berjaya sahkan kehadiran uh, uh -huh. Kami akan semak dulu nanti kalau boleh petang ni tengok balik untuk buat e-survey eh. Sebab kalau tak buat e-survey nanti tak boleh dapat mata CPD uh, Itulah sebab uh, uh. <laughs> uh, Tak apa nanti kita kita akan tengok sistem tu Saya takut e-survey bermasalah Tapi kalau once dah sahkan kehadiran tu sepatutnya memang dah boleh buat e-survey lah Kadang-kadang okay. mungkin kena refresh dulu ke kadang dia masuk lambat sikit. Ha, ha. Ha. Sebab oh. ada yang dah berjaya buat, uh, kalau tak boleh buat melalui pasport USM tu uh, nanti Prof boleh masuk dekat uh, website MyCPD. Lepas tu scroll down dekat bawah ada e-survey. Nanti boleh cuba melalui website kot. Okay, I will try that then. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry Prof. Sorry It's doktor semua. Uh, ni, uh, Puan Ruzana. Yes, saya saya. try to um, scan melalui QR code tapi dia QR code ni nampak macam dia boleh scan benda yang luar bukan dalam application. Saya masih dalam phone kan? Ah, tak, tak boleh. Dia kena guna pasport USM sahaja. Tak, pasport USM memang tapi okay. dia boleh scan code yang bila kata saya guna phone ni saya scan code dekat laptop boleh tapi kalau dalam phone tu itself. Hmm. Patutnya tak ada masalah tu. Sepatutnya boleh je scan. Uh, Um, link 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 ah, doktor Maksudnya, guna link boleh? Okay link sebab link tu tak boleh tekan so saya kena type lah Dekat, dekat chat, chat. Ah, saya, saya ah. ada letak kat chat boleh copy je Copy ah, link tu okay, okay, okay. Saya tak perasan yang kat chat tu Sekejap, eh. uh. 
Uh, Sebab dah ada orang yang berjaya isi survey, e-survey so hmm. saya rasa sepatutnya tak ada masalah boleh, untuk Boleh ah, boleh guna either one. Tak kisah QR code ke atau link dua-dua pun boleh. Janji uh, buat. Kan, so, Zana, uh, saya rasa share. Ya. Uh, ya, tadi ya, saya ya. pun tadi saya pun ada masalah guna apa tu guna app untuk uh, buat survey lah. So okay. attendance saya attendance saya scan guna app tapi okay. untuk survey saya guna link kat chat. So semua okey lah. Saya, saya, saya buat macam tu okey. Ya, uh, ada dapat email tak? Email pengesahan kata dah berjaya buat e-survey? Uh, email eh. Uh, akan terima email daripada CDE uh, mengesahkan kata uh, tahniah anda telah berjaya me, uh, buat e-survey. Sebab kadang-kadang uh, sistem tak capture Wani boleh check nama Dr. Chah tak uh, untuk okay. yang e-survey? Dah isi ke belum? Okay, boleh check. Hmm. Hmm. Um, email be belum lagi? Ha, belum, belum isi. Ha, kalau belum uh, dapat email, saya takut uh, dia, dia orang tak capture lagi. Maksudnya uh, sel selalunya selepas kita submit untuk e-survey, akan ada terus email daripada CDE oh, uh, uh, mengesahkan oh, bahawa oh, e-survey oh. telah dibuat. Okey tapi uh, bila saya pergi uh, ke e, e survey tu uh, yeah. dia dah ada tanda hijau hijau tick lah saya saya tak boleh buat survey tu lagi sebab dah dah submit dah. Okey saya note nama doktor nanti saya semak dulu ya. Okey terima kasih. Oh terima kasih doktor. Okey man okey ready I can see now. Okey bro. <laughs> Assalamualaikum Pak Rujana Assalamualaikum Pak Rujana Ramai yang yang beritahu terima ah, Dah berjaya tapi tak terima email Ya yeah, ya yeah. uh, Itulah saya, saya kena kena Semak dulu dengan PPKT Saya takut uh, ada masalah di bahagian Notification tu Uh, kalau uh, uh, sampai petang ni masih tak ada lagi nanti kita uh, kita keluarkan email kepada yang belum berjaya dapat email tu kita minta isi semula kalau boleh kalau tak kita minta uh, PPKT tengok dulu kot macam mana kalau was dah berjaya sepatutnya dia dah isi dah di tick lah dia dah ada tarikh hari ni untuk Dr Idris dah dah ada dah dah masuk untuk kedua-dua satu scan dan uh, survey Dah ha, dia, jadi, jadi tak ada masalah okay, kot Dr. Idris. Lambat dari segi email lah kot, lambat sikit Ah Haa betul-betul. Dr. Zainal ada Wani? Dr. Aizal. Dr. Nurul. Dr. Zainal ada? Settle dua-dua. Empat. Dr. Nurul. Dr. Nurul Kaiza. Hmm. Wani tengok dekat chat tu ada yang cakap tak dapat uh, email jadi uh, cuba cuba chat. Dewan dah berjaya tak Dr. Muhammad Nazri? Okey Dr. Dr. Nurul Kaiza dah berjaya. Dr. siapa lagi? Dr. Nurul Kaiza, Dr. Muhammad Nazri. Muhammad Nazri. Ha Dr. Syahdatul Akma. Nazri. Okay, saya pun dah berjaya ya. Terima kasih Dr. Syairah sini. Terima kasih Dr. Syairah. Terima kasih Dr. Sabia. Dr. Ahmad Sanusi ada buat ni? Uh, dah berjaya scan tapi belum ada e-survey lagi. Dr. Ada. Ahmad Sanusi. Dr. Ahmad Sanusi boleh, boleh buat e-survey semula. Mungkin boleh buat melalui web uh, MyCPD. Dr. Haidi. Okey, terima kasih. Sama-sama Dr. Dr. Haidi. Dr. Haidi dah settle kedua-duanya. 
Okay. Terima kasih Dr. Haidi. Okay. Uh, Dr. Saidi. Dr. Nuh. Okay. Dr. Saidi dah settle juga. Terima kasih. Okay. Apa lagi? Nuh Sun Yam. Ah, uh, Dr. Nio pun okey, settle. Ada lagi yang bermasalah tak? Kalau Mana ada yang bermasalah tak? minta minta maklumkanlah supaya kita boleh check uh, melalui sistem terus. Untuk Dr. Muhammad Nazri saya tak nampak lagi nama. Sekejap saya ke IV dulu Dr. Saya check balik. Prof Azlinda. Nazri. Azlinda. Dr. Azlinda okey? Kam Suwin. Kam. Okey. Okey dah settle Kam Suwin. Siti Asma. Siti. Siti Asma belum isi survey. Uh, Dr. Siti Asma boleh boleh tolong uh, buat isi survey semula tak? Uh, Dr. Salbiah Wani? Salbiah kejap. Sebab saya pun kena keep on refreshing sebab <laughs> Ah memang memang Wani sebab dia akan sentiasa masuk. Dia bertambah kan? Ha, kejap ya. Salbiah. Okay. Okay, Dr. Salbiah dah okey? Dah settle? Terima kasih Dr. Salbiah. Ada lagi ke yang bermasalah? Yang saya tengok yang belum isi tapi dah scan kehadiran Dr. Mahayudin. Mahayudin. Uh, Dr. Lance. Dr. Mahayudin tak ada. Uh, sorry, ya. Ya. Ha. Yes. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. dah isi e-survey ke? Ya. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm able to access it through campus online. Thank you. Okay, okay. Sorry, no. sorry. No, 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 it's okay. I, I find I find your whole your whole presentation is very, very user friendly and helpful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ikut semua dah left ni rasa tak ada masalah kot. Ikut ni eh? Terima kasih Wani. Terima kasih Zana. Terima kasih semua.